In the dimly lit chambers of the Tower of London, a letter that would echo through the annals of history was penned. This letter, filled with defiance, desperation and dignity, is attributed to Anne Boleyn, the ill-fated Queen of England, as she awaited her tragic end. Addressed to her once ardent lover and now estranged husband, King Henry VIII, Anne's last communication is a profound document that provides an intimate glimpse into her final thoughts and emotions. Scholars have debated its authenticity, yet the letter's eloquence and raw emotion have led many to accept it as a genuine testament of a queen who once held a king's heart. Whether it was her handwriting or dictated to a scribe, the letter is a poignant relic of Anne's turbulent life and tumultuous relationship with the king. So join me now as we recount the last letter of Anne Boleyn. Anne Boleyn, the enigmatic Queen of England who reigned from 1533 to 1536 and became the infamous second wife of King Henry VIII, has left a name that resonates unforgettably through the annals of English history. Her life, marked by intrigue, passion and tragedy, was pivotal in the seismic religious shift that gave birth to the English Reformation. Born around 1501 or 1507 to Thomas Boleyn, the first Earl of Wiltshire, and Elizabeth Howard, Anne was cultivated in the courts of the Netherlands and France. Before returning to England in 1522 to initially wed her Irish cousin, Anne Boleyn served with distinction as a maid of honour to Queen Claude of France. However, destiny had other plans, and she soon became a maid of honour to Henry VIII's wife, Catherine of Aragon. Her father's refusal crushed a clandestine marriage to Henry Percy, with Cardinal Thomas Wolsey leading Anne back to Hever Castle. Yet fate again interceded in 1526, when Henry VIII's desire for Anne ignited. Her resistance to becoming his mistress would only fuel his obsession, and his longing to marry her led to the dramatic dismantling of the Catholic Church's authority in England. After a series of political manoeuvres, she and Henry were formally wed in 1533. The Catholic Church's annulling of Henry's previous marriage and validation of his marriage to Anne led to England's break from the Vatican and Henry's control over the Church of England. Crown Queen Anne gave birth to the future Queen Elizabeth I, but sadly after that suffered three miscarriages. The disappointment over not producing a male heir coupled with Henry's wandering eye towards Jane Seymour darkened Anne's days as queen. In a stunning turn, she was arrested for high treason in 1536, tried and convicted. The charges, which included adultery, incest and a plot to kill the king, are widely viewed by modern historians as dubious. Her execution marked a tragic end to a life that resonated through the corridors of time. Anne's legacy lived on as she became a martyr and heroine of the English Reformation, celebrated in various artistic and cultural works. Her influence as the most influential and important Queen Consort England has ever had provided the catalyst for profound changes in the nation's religious landscape. Her story, filled with drama, ambition and resilience, captures the imagination, leaving an indelible mark on history. The last letter penned by Anne Boleyn to her husband, King Henry VIII, is an artifact shrouded in mystery, emotion and historical significance. Written from the confines of the Tower of London where she was imprisoned on charges of high treason, Anne's final words to the king encapsulate a complex blend of despair, protest and lingering affection. Dated 6th of May 1536, just days before her tragic execution, the letter offers an intimate glimpse into the mind of a queen facing her impending doom. Sir, your grace's displeasure and my imprisonment are things so strange unto me as what to write or what to excuse, I am altogether ignorant. 
Whereas you send unto me, willing me to confess a truth, and so obtain your favour, by such an one whom you know to be mine antient professed enemy, I no sooner received this message by him, than I rightly conceived your meaning, and if, as you say, confessing a truth indeed may procure my safety, then I shall with all willingness and duty perform your command. While the letter's authenticity has been debated among historians, its content provides a poignant reflection of Anne's turbulent relationship with Henry and her unyielding stance on her innocence. The letter's eloquence and impassioned pleas serve as a lasting testament to Anne's character and intellect, and it remains one of the most compelling documents from one of the most dramatic periods in English history. In the shadow of power, love and betrayal, Anne's final letter to Henry VIII is a haunting echo of a once vibrant life cut short by the cruel twists of politics and fate. But let not your grace ever imagine that your poor wife will ever be brought to acknowledge a fault where not so much as a thought thereof proceeded. And to speak a truth, never prince had wife more loyal in all duty and in all true affection than you have ever found in Anne Boleyn, with which name and place I could willingly have contented myself, if God and your grace's pleasure had been so pleased. Neither did I at any time so far forget myself in my exaltation, or received queenship, but that I always looked for such an alteration as now I find, for the ground of my preferment being on no surer foundation than your grace's fancy, the least alteration I knew was fit and sufficient to draw this fancy to some other subject. Discovered among Cromwell's papers with the enigmatic heading to the king from the lady in the tower, a letter has ignited the intrigue of historians and ignited debates that have endured for nearly five centuries. But was it truly penned by Anne Boleyn? You have chosen me from a low estate to be your queen and companion, far beyond my desert or desire. If then you found me worthy of such honour, good your grace let not any light fancy or bad counsel of mine enemies withdraw your princely favour from me, neither let that stain, that unworthy stain of a disloyal heart, towards your good grace, ever cast so foul a blot on your most dutiful wife and the infant princess, your daughter. Try me, good king, but let me have a lawful trial, and let not my sworn enemies sit as my accusers and judges. Yea, let me receive an open trial. For my truth shall fear no open shame, then shall you see. Either mine innocency cleared, your suspicion and conscience satisfied, the ignominy and slander of the world stopped, or my guilt openly declared. The controversy over this mysterious document stirs questions and doubts, with sceptics pointing to discrepancies in handwriting, a variant spelling of her name, Bulan, a spelling, however, her brother George etched into his tower cell, and a tone seemingly too audacious for a woman who may still have harboured hopes of escaping her fate. Yet the allure of the letter is inescapable. To believe in its authenticity is to touch the spark of Anne's wit and intelligence, to feel a tangible link to a remarkable woman in history. So that, whatsoever God or you may determine of me, your grace may be freed from an open censure, and mine offence being so lawfully proved, your grace is at liberty, both before God and man, not only to execute worthy punishment on me as an unlawful wife, but to follow your affection already, settled on that party for whose sake I am now as I am, whose name I could some good while since have pointed unto, your grace being not ignorant of my suspicion therein. The letter stands as a captivating testament, whether Anne's voice or skillful imitation, to accept it as hers is to embrace and revel in a legacy that transcends time, beckoning us to explore the depths of a mind that was as compelling as it was enigmatic. The choice to believe breathes life into the letter, allowing it to become a hauntingly beautiful relic of a bygone era, connecting us to the very essence of Anne Boleyn.
But if you have already determined of me, and that not only my death, but an infamous slander, must bring you the enjoying of your desired happiness, then I desire of God that he will pardon your great sin therein, and likewise mine enemies the instruments thereof, and that he will not call you a strict account for your unprincely and cruel usage of me at his general judgment seat, where both you and myself must shortly appear, and in whose judgment, I doubt not, whatsoever the world may think of me, mine innocence shall be openly known and sufficiently cleared. My last and only request shall be that myself may only bear the burthen of your grace's displeasure, and that it may not touch the innocent souls of those poor gentlemen who, as I understand, are likewise in straight imprisonment for my sake. If ever I have found favour in your sight, if ever the name of Anne Boleyn hath been pleasing in your ears, then let me obtain this request, and I will so leave to trouble your grace any further, with mine earnest prayers to the Trinity to have your grace in his good keeping, and to direct you in all your actions. From my doleful prison in the tower, this 6th of May, your most loyal and ever faithful wife, Anne Boleyn.